It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Brian, this next question is a two-parter because two different people asked and they asked it from different directions. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ask both questions so that we can give a nice, full, robust, robust answer. Are you giving two tumblers away? No, uh, no what we're going to do is uh, bring me a sword. <laughs> we're going to cut it in half and we're going to send each of you half of this. The first one is from Rob. Rob says, how do I help my wife overcome her money anxiety? We combined income some time ago. Uh, and we're currently saving between 15 and 20% with a six-month emergency fund. She recently went on a girl's trip and didn't even want to buy a drink. Just so apprehensive about spending, she didn't enjoy it. So then Andrew said, how do I start a conversation with my spouse about money? He has absolutely no interest in money, stays at home. I want to include him, but he keep pushes me away. How do I start? So you have one that's like overly focused, doesn't have any comfort around spending or consumption, and one that wants like nothing to do with it. Two separate, but these are different couples, right? This isn't the same couple. Uh, how would you talk about how to like get these spouses on the same page? What are some tools, ticks, tricks, tactics that they could all like put into place that would help them in each of their given scenarios. I, I think a lot of people, when they find out we're financial planners by trade, this is what our day job is, they think that we're just wandering around. And I've made this joke before because Susie Orman's show that was famous forever was just the great reaction of her telling everybody no. Yeah. You know, yeah. you call in um, to her show in, in a self-loathing way, and then she's going to tell you no <laughs> on about everything. And I think a lot of people would be surprised to find out it's just the opposite in reality. As I, One of my favorite things, and it happens because we work with financial mutants, yeah. we're telling people go enjoy your money. Actually create some opportunity for yourself to, to, to create memories and go on trips and do really fun, fulfilling things with your money. So it makes me sad when I hear Rob talk about his spouse has a hard time even going on a girl's trip and ordering a drink because they're just so panicked about the money. The reason we give you guidance, if you go to, to whether it's learn.moneyguy.com or you go to moneyguy.com slash resources and look at the financial order of operations, it's supposed to free you. It's supposed to create what your the goal is, but then once you reach that goal, it's supposed to essentially open up your eyes that now that I've checked the box, I can move on and enjoy and, and, and really feel like in a healthy way. I've done what I need to so I can truly enjoy this money. So, if Rob, if you and your spouse are obviously having great conversations to the point that she she she's dialed in, y'all are both connected as, as a team on this thing, then you know what your goals are. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with also, you know, if you know that she has this type of struggle, maybe next year when a girl's trip or the next girl's trip that comes, go ahead and let's free up some of that money and just mm-hmm. saying, hey, on this trip, go ahead and $400, you go enjoy this, you know, so that you get the liberty of going and, and enjoying your good disciplined life and doing it in a good way. Now, for the other person that you obviously don't want to give them the tumbler so you're not giving their name. <laughs> oh, the spouse, I'm sorry. That was from Andrew. I'm not so, saying, sorry. Well, I'm going to say Andrea. Uh, uh, Andrew. So we can give two. I'm going to send both of you tumblers. Okay. So the other one has a spouse that, that wants to have nothing to do with it. Look, I get this. I mean, this would be like, why do you, if you wanted to get your walls painted at your house, um, your friends probably don't want to just show up. But if all of a sudden you say, hey, there's going to be pizza and a case of beer, all, all of a sudden, sudden they all show your up. friends, because you turned it into a social endeavor that people actually would want to come and paint your, your walls. The money can be the same way. You have to put the, figure out the whole carrot approach um, with your spouse. And what I always like to do, and I've talked about this, is go create fun activities mm-hmm. on this. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a date night where – Part of it's going to be that we're going to talk about budgeting or we're going to talk about, you know, what, how doing our net worth and going over what's changed over the last year. Just like you have to go prime the pump by buying the pizza for your peers and the soft drinks to get them to help you paint the walls, you might have to prime the pump with your spouse as well to get them excited about, hey, this is what we're doing. These are the tools we're going to use. And if we get on board with this, we can do this, you know, and maybe you come up with short term goals like, hey, if we do this right, we can take the kids here. Mm-hmm. If we do this right, by the time we get to 45, maybe we can pull back on our savings rate a little bit. Go ahead and create those incentives if you're the financially minded person so that you can have that get your teammate. That's what your partner is. That's what your spouse is excited about this common goal that you share. And I think that's also going to nurture the relationship and their skill set to get a more active role in this whole process process too. Here's a really fun lead-in question for that date night. I've done this with my wife. If we had $10 million tomorrow, free and clear cash money, what are some things we'd do? 
and just, just start listing it down. Or maybe maybe you live in a high cost of living, so the number's 50 million. I don't know, whatever your number is. But if we had enough money tomorrow where money kind of wasn't a concern a whole lot anymore, what are some things we do? Well, she'd throw things out. Oh, well, I'd, you know, I really want to go to Bora Bora and stay in one of those huts. And I want to take the kids to Disney. And I want to do, and I want to put a pool in the backyard. And I want to do this. Well, you just list all those out. And then you start asking this question. Okay, here's all these things. What would we need to start doing today to actually do these things? Like if we wanted to go to Bora Bora, what would need to happen to make that possible? Well, it costs this much money. How long would we have to save for that? What would we have to give up? Okay, we want to put a pool in the backyard. Okay, how much would that cost? Well, how much do we have to save? Well, how would we pay for it? You might be amazed. It doesn't take a $10 million check to allow you to do some of those things. For us, you know, I think our Bora Bora trip is probably not going to happen while our kids are still young. It's probably going to be something that's going to happen later on in life when we can actually steal away for a couple weeks at a time. And that's okay. It's one of the reasons we're saving the way that we're saving so we can do those kinds of things. We're trying to hopefully make decisions today like no one else, so we can make decisions later <laughs> like no one else. If you can have that conversation with your spouse, you'll be amazing how well you'll become aligned when it's less about the strategies you're employing and more about the outcomes that you're hoping those strategies will produce. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think starting the conversation, using the tools between budgeting, it's crazy if we don't say another great tool is our net worth tool. Oh, if you go right. to learn.moneyguy.com, we do this annually with our own spouses because if you're the financially minded spouse and you want to get the other one, it's fun to go on this journey where you actually every year have a tradition where you're tracking how much you have, what you owe, but then you talk about the journey of what you're accomplishing too, because it can be very affirming and you can just rediscuss some of these great things. And like I said, make this fun. I think that if you take the fun out of the process, you're missing out on an opportunity to actually get your teammate, your partner to be just as excited about your financial successes as you are. So make sure you're the good coach of, all, of this entire endeavor as well. 